Israel's military leaders justify their raid on Gaza's largest hospital by claiming it houses a Hamas command center. But many say what they've produced as evidence is far from conclusive. So by targeting the Al-Shifa complex in an operation running for hours, has Israel committed a war crime? This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm James Bays. For years, Israel has accused Hamas of using the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza as a cover for its military operations. Israeli forces surrounded and attacked it for days before launching a raid inside its grounds. They claim to have found what they call grab bags containing weapons and uniforms belonging to Hamas fighters. But what they call evidence doesn't appear convincing. And many fear, with the Israeli military in sole control of the operation, it could fabricate facts to make the world believe its allegations. And attacking hospitals, especially those treating critically ill patients and babies, is defined as a war crime under international law. We'll discuss all of this in a moment with our panel of experts. For, but first, this report from Kara Legg. Gaza's largest hospital on the front line of Israel's war, raided for the second time by Israeli forces. Full military kit for one Hamas terrorist. They released this video, saying it shows soldiers supported by tanks inside the compound after storming it the previous day. For those of you who read Arabic... Israeli soldiers claim they've uncovered items belonging to Hamas. These images cannot be independently verified. A few of the most interesting things that we have found totally confirm, without any doubt, that Hamas systematically uses hospitals in their military operations in violation of international law. And what we have found, I think, is only the tip of the iceberg. Hamas denies using the hospital as a base, calling it a lie to justify Israel's destruction of Gaza's medical infrastructure. Doctors, health officials and witnesses also reject Israel's claims as false. It is a civilian hospital. There is no any member of Hamas in Shifa hospital. There is no any military activity in Shifa. There is anything happened when they enter the hospital. And it, uh, all what happened, it is around the hospital. But inside the hospital, all of the people in the hospital are civilians. The U.S. president, however, maintains that Hamas is operating from Gaza's largest hospital, but has failed to provide evidence. One thing has been established is that Hamas does have headquarters, weapons, materiel below this hospital, and I suspect others. Can you detail for us what kind of evidence you have seen that Hamas has a command center under Al Shifa Hospital? No, I can't tell you. I won't tell you. Do you feel absolutely confident based on what you know that yes. that is the truth? Yes. Yes. Now! Despite calls for a ceasefire from around the world and the UN Security Council passing a resolution calling for extended humanitarian pauses, Israel's attacks haven't stopped. The US leader says it is not realistic to expect Israel to stop its war on Gaza. Hospitals are protected under international humanitarian law, but in Israel's military operation, they're a target. Israel's military incursion into Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City is totally unacceptable. Hospitals are not battlegrounds. We're extremely worried for the safety of staff and patients. Protecting them is paramount. Hundreds of patients are lining the hospital's corridors, while thousands more Palestinians are sheltering within the Al Shifa compound. They have nowhere else to go, as Israel's bombing continues relentlessly across the Strip. Karaleg for Inside Story. Well, let's discuss all of this further with our panel of guests. In Oslo, we have Eric Foss, the CEO of the Norwegian Aid Committee, a humanitarian organisation working with health-related projects in the Middle East. He's worked as a surgeon in Gaza since 1994, including during several wars. In New York, A. Kayum Ahmed is special advisor 
on the right to health at Human Rights Watch. And in London, we have Thomas McManus, director of the International State Crime Initiative at Queen Mary University of London. Thank you all for joining us here on Inside Story. Since the bombardment of Gaza started, it seems that health facilities, hospitals, ambulances have been in the firing line. And since the ground offensive started, it seems the targets have been the hospitals in Gaza City, with the Al Shifa Hospital target number one. Eric, you know this hospital so well. You're sitting... In the past, you've been under bombardment in Gaza. This one, you're watching from afar. How's it made you feel watching the pictures you're seeing? I think this is terrible. And uh, it, it's, it has a huge impact on, uh, on the civilian society of Gaza, since this is... Uh, Shifa is the main hospital. That's really where they can go when they have serious illness. And uh, what we see now is that uh, the infrastructure is breaking down. The hospital have been targeted uh, and been hit with uh, several rockets the days uh, preceding the ride. They're, and now they are... I actually got a message just now from the from the hospital saying that there are still soldiers moving about inside the hospital. They have more than 650 patients, and uh, they are still uh, worrying about the situation for these patients. OK. Thomas, you're our international legal expert on this panel. Tell us, hospitals are protected places under international law, but what are the exemptions to that? So, hospitals are particularly protected uh, under international law. And the exception will be, uh, and the way they can lose that protection, if there are facts on the ground which, which indicate that they're being used um, to put the, the uh, army, the, the opposing army, in danger. Um, and so the, we don't have those facts. We haven't seen any of those facts yet, and that's something that will come out uh, when we look at accountability. But even so, even if they lose their protected spaces, we don't lose the general principles of international humanitarian law of caution. Uh, that's about warning people and, and evacuating if possible, which is not possible in this situation because we have a hospital in a war zone. Um, and the principles of proportionality and uh, military necessity. And it's hard to see how we can match those two up in this situation. What possible military necessity would require this kind of attack. Um, so it, it seems on the face of it to be um, just not proportional, the way that civilians have been coming to the line of fire. Uh, and more than that, we have not just an obligation not to attack medical facilities. Uh, Israel, as the occupying power, has the responsibility to keep these hospitals open, to keep them supplied and keep them going. Um, and when we think about the kind of uh, the, the proportionality and the protected status. We don't think about just the hospital today and tomorrow. We have to think about its supply lines and its ability to operate in a week, two weeks, three weeks from now. And that's something that has to be taken into account before an attack. Kayum, this hospital is not just a hospital, it's the biggest health complex. It, um, it, it spreads over several city blocks, but also it became a place of refuge for so many who had to leave their homes and were looking for a place of safety. I'm told at one point Al Shifa had 45,000 people living in it. Absolutely. Uh, a number of internally displaced people are camping out in hospitals because they believe that these hospitals have the kinds of protections under international humanitarian law that other guests have alluded to. Um, and those protections can really only be removed under very, very specific circumstances. At Human Rights Watch, we contest any of the claims made by the Israeli Defense Forces based on the information that we have available, um, that these hospitals and these facilities are being used for military purposes. I think it's important to note as well that thus far, Israel has only mentioned about four or five hospitals which they allege are being used by Hamas. And there are 36 hospitals in Gaza, of course, Al-Shifa being the largest. And as of November 10th, the World Health Organization has noted that 18 out of the 36 hospitals, so that's more than half of the hospitals, and 46 out of 72 primary care clinics 
were forced to shut down because of damage from attacks or the lack of electricity and fuel. And so we therefore have several outstanding questions about the alleged evidence being presented by Israel thus far. Can the evidence be verified? Does the evidence presented thus far justify attacks on the entire healthcare system? And if these attacks are really about Hamas, why has the World Health Organization also reported attacks on healthcare in the West Bank, where Hamas has no control? And this is why we believe that attacks on hospitals and healthcare should be investigated as war crimes. I'd like to come back to the allegations that Israel is making a little later uh, in the programme and to that raid that took place inside the hospital. But, Thomas, first, um, th th this wasn't the first time the hospital came under attack. There was a convoy of ambulances that were trying to leave the hospital to go to take very ill patients to Egypt that was struck on November the 3rd. And um, the hospital ran out of fuel, uh, which meant that all sorts of equipment, including the incubators for the babies, and everyone has seen those really distressing pictures of those babies wrapped in blankets. Um, from a legal point of view, were those two things war crimes? So, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. An attack on a medical facility includes stopping uh, supplies getting to that medical facility, so that would include the stopping of electricity, oxygen supplies, things like that. And any attack on a, uh, ambulances or a colonnade of ambulances is is included in what the protections provide for protections of these civilian objects and the law is very clear on this and very strong on this there's no kind of, there's lots of things contested in international humanitarian law but this is not one of them that the attack on these kinds of facilities including the the stopping of supplies creating conditions in which people become endangered inside or even just making uh, a doctor's work difficult are uh, clear war crimes. Eric, um, the raid, of course, took place, and the Israeli military said it was a precise and targeted operation against Ham Hamas in a specified area of Shifa Hospital, initially six tanks and 100 commandos. Now, they've been making allegations about uh, Shifa Hospital uh, since 2014, at least. You were there in Shifa Hospital in 2014. Just be absolutely clear to us, have you ever seen any Hamas fighters in our Shifa hospital? Have you seen any command centres in your time in the hospital? These claims have been repeated. We heard them first time during the war 2008-2009 and again in 2014. Uh, I have been in this hospital during these wars. I also have been there once or twice a year, every year uh, for the last 30 years. And I, I can move freely about. And of course, when we heard these allegations, we were we took them very seriously because it is a war crime to to mix military staff with the hospital. So therefore, we made our own investigations. We asked uh, our colleagues that we knew were not Hamas people, and we we as I said, I have and my colleagues, we have been able to move freely about the hospital. We have never seen any sign of uh, weaponed uh, people. I wonder if Israel is really uh, differing between civilian staff and military, because since Hamas is responsible for the whole civil society, of course, there are Hamas uh, people uh, that are responsible for health care and the Ministry of Health and these type of stuff, but they are not legal uh, uh, legal targets, and they cannot be considered as Hamas military staff. So therefore, to use the word Hamas all the time, it's important to distinguish between military uh, ac activities and uh, maintaining the civil society. But what? we have never seen any sign of a military activity or any command central. I would also like to comment that when they hit the day before they uh, they actually entered the hospital, they targeted the oxygen uh, concentrate the plant, which actually we have helped building. And we have built uh, oxygenated systems in all the hospitals and also training the staff to maintain these. 
these are not military uh, objects, but they're extremely important in a hospital because apart from the power, they are important for the incubators, they're important for all critically ill patients. So by, uh, by removing this facility, they have uh, deteriorated the situation for all patients in the hospital, particularly all those now injured in the, in the activities. When they launched the raid, they put out a statement, quite a long statement. The end of it says, we call on all Hamas terrorists present in the hospital to surrender. There were no Hamas uh, um, fighters that they've arrested and none surrendered. And then shortly after, um, the military spokesman of the Israeli army appeared there at the hospital and he took people on what he said was a one-take tour, so it wasn't edited at all, although they did delete the video and then repost it with it slightly changed a few hours later. Let's just listen to one of the things that the um, military spokesman, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conriquez, said during that one-take that one tour. These weapons have absolutely no business being inside a hospital. The only reason they're here is because Hamas put them here, because they use this place, like many other hospitals and ambulances and sensitive facilities inside the Gaza Strip, for their illicit military purposes. So there's Kalashnikov rifles here, even uh, ammunition. Kayam, you have, I'm sure, seen uh, all of that video. Does it convince you? I think even if this were accurate, Israel has not demonstrated that the ensuing hospital attacks were proportionate. And I think proportionality is another important component of the international humanitarian law framework that should be brought into this conversation. All warring parties must take constant care to minimize harm to civilians. And attacks on hospitals being used to commit what is referred to as acts harmful to the enemy are still unlawful if these attacks are indiscriminate or disproportionate. And so the use of explosive weapons in densely populated areas heightens the risk of indiscriminate attacks. Uh, attacks in which the anticipated loss of civilian life and property are excessive uh, compared to the military gains are disproportionate. And so these attacks by Israel have, in our view, been excessive and disproportionate. And they are magnified with respect to hospitals, since even the threat of an attack or minor da damage can have massive life or death implications for patients and their caregivers. We, we have seen, for instance, in um, the laws of war, that if, for instance, there is a gunman standing on top of a hospital um, shooting at the military, that gunman can then, under international law, be attacked and shot at. But you cannot bomb the entire hospital complex. Even the United States government does not support attacks from the air on hospitals. And so the question of proportionality, I think, is a critically important one and should not be left out of this conversation. Earlier in the week, the Israeli military also showed a video of the Rantisi Children's Hospital, again showing some weapons that were found there. Thomas, what do you make of Eric's point that these could just be a guard force that had left a few weapons there? Um, the last time I went uh, to Jerusalem, I think, was during COVID. I had to have a COVID test and I had to go through an armed guard to get into a, a clinic in Israel. So um, is it really any different? Yeah, I mean... I think, I think it's right that we have to consider proportionality in this sense. If we find weapons inside a hospital, that indicates, perhaps, that there are, there's some blurring of the lines between military and civilian objectives on the part of Hamas. If we accept that, we can say that perhaps a war crime has uh, been committed in that place. That doesn't give you carte blanche to commit war crimes as a response to that. That's not how the law works. Proportionality principle never goes away. And so you have to have facts on the ground that show that it was military necessity to attack some of uh, these installations. Um, and, and to attack a hospital, you would have to have 
you would have to have irrefutable facts on the ground showing a massive uh, military presence inside in order to justify it at all. So the idea that there might be crime, war crimes happening on one side is in no way a, a, a green light to commit disproportionate attack on a civilian objective like this on the other side. And that seems to be the argument that's being made, but that doesn't, that's not how international humanitarian law works. You don't, you don't justify one crime with another crime. You, uh, you, you must prosecute and hold accountability for both of them. Eric, if we compare what Israel has now said it's found, and you, I'm sure, have seen that video, it doesn't seem to be the same thing as they were talking about before the raid. They've been talking about this massive command and control centre, a network of tunnels, access from the tunnels to the wards of the hospital. Uh, let me just play you uh, a little bit of what another of the military spokesmen, uh, Admiral Daniel Hagari, said on the first day of the uh, ground war about what was underneath Al Shifa, he claimed. The red buildings, as I mentioned, are buildings that Hamas is using, meaning he does his command and control in different departments of the hospital, like the Rengen room and others. He uses these places in order to do command and control for terror activities, launching rockets, etc., etc. Well, Eric, he, he named, if you've listened to all of that press conference, all different parts of the building that were being used for different things. That is not what they've been able to prove, is it? No, of course not. And it's, uh, I would say it would be impossible uh, unless this is something that has been installed the uh, last days. We have been there uh, and in these buildings and we've never seen any sign of this. They also claim that the radiology department is part of and should be some kind of entrance. Uh, and actually, they have searched through the radiology department, destroying, uh, as I got the information from my colleagues, they have sabotaged now all the advanced imaging equipment, uh, which again is not military, uh, have no uh, military importance. They have also, before they entered the hospital, there were snipers uh, shooting at the hospital, injuring and, in fact, killing at least one of the nurses in the hospital. Uh, but when they entered, there was no gunfight, according to my colleagues. Uh, so that no, no gunshot being fired inside the hospital. And that means that there was no fighting. There were, were no armed uh, soldiers inside the hospital when the uh, the IDF entered. So um, it's very difficult to uh, to understand how they can maintain these claims. They are not just claims, of course, by Israel. They're claims by the United States as well, which said it had its own independent uh, intelligence of what was going on. And we heard that from President Biden when he gave that news conference in San Francisco. But I think there was another thing that he said in that news conference in San Francisco that was worth uh, listening to carefully. He talked about what the Israeli military are doing right now. They're also bringing in incubators. We're bringing in other other means to help the people in the hospital and they've given the doctors and i'm told the doctors and nurses and the personnel an opportunity to get out of harm's way so this is a different story than i believe what was occurring before with indiscriminate bombing okay um that 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 there those last words this is a different story than i believe was occurring before indiscriminate bombing Indiscriminate bombing is how Joe Biden describes it. Isn't that a war crime? That certainly, on the face of it, might amount to a war crime, again, based on the kinds of evidence we're able to gather. I think it's also important to uh, point out that Biden's earlier comments about um, the Israeli military providing hospitals with incubators is, is a little disingenuous. It's like ripping out someone's heart and then giving them a Band-Aid to cover up the wound. And, and so I think this must also be called out, the, the hypocrisy of the United States government, as well as other Global North leaders who are um, contributing to the military assistance and arms sales to, to Israel. But this last statement, I think, is absolutely important to note, given that the US itself 
has prohibitions on attacking hospitals in the way in which Israel is currently attacking hospitals. So even on that basis alone, I think it's important that the, the US and other global North powers call out Israel for the way in which it's engaging in military attacks on hospitals across Gaza, as well as the West Bank. I think it's also important to recognize some of the history uh, around what's unfolding. I know we're focusing very much on al-Shifa and the attacks on hospitals, but Human Rights Watch has previously found that Israeli authorities are committing the crimes against humanity of apartheid and persecution. And so the ongoing attacks on hospitals must be understood in this broader historical context. And we can't separate these current attacks from the ongoing crimes of apartheid and crimes against humanity and persecution, collective punishment that are currently unfolding in Palestine. Thomas, um, we don't have much time, but very quickly, is there any prospect, do you think, of international law catching up with all of this? Yes, the International Criminal Court's opened an investigation. Are you hopeful that this will go somewhere? Um, I'm not hopeful that international criminal law or international law itself is going to be able to do anything uh, quickly enough. And I think we do need to think of this wider context. We're starting to see, it's starting to be clear now that we're looking at a wider context of attacks on civilians, attacks on civilian objectives. And I think we need to steer, start thinking about, and we need to start talking about the, the stages of genocide. And one of the stages of genocide is systematic weakening, which is withdrawal of health care, indiscriminate attacks on civilians. Um, and, and I think that maybe if, if, uh, if a court was to take a case to the International Court of Justice on a treaty basis, not a criminal court, but again, we could get an order from the ICJ to uh, Israel to stop and desist what they're doing while we have further investigation. But otherwise, international criminal law is a slow-acting process and is not going to help things on the ground now. What we need now is we need civil society to put pressures on their own governments with demonstrations, and we need states to start uh, treating uh, Israel as not an upstanding member of the international community. We need to look at BDS and other nonviolent forms of resistance around the world in order to put pressure on the state of Israel to stop what it's doing. Well, thank you very much, Eric, and thank you to all our guests, Eric Foss, A. Kayum Ahmed and Thomas McManus. If you tuned in late, you can watch the whole programme again on our website. At any time, go to aljazeera.com. Your comments or perhaps suggestions for future topics to be discussed here are gratefully received on Facebook. We're at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. On X, or as it's still, as I still call it, Twitter, it's at AJ Inside Story. From me, James Bays, and the team here in Doha, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.